Thursday, we defined kinematics as the study of motion without regard to what causes that motion. In other words, we were looking at motion, we were looking at moving objects, but not paying any attention to the forces, the pushes or pulls that cause those forces. Now, the first thing that we defined within kinematics was the difference between a vector and a scalar. There's lots of different quantities that are vectors and lots of different quantities that are scalars. What is the fundamental difference between a vector and a scalar? They have something in common with each other, but something that separates them. What's the difference between a vector and a scalar? Okay, so a scalar doesn't have direction. Uh, a vector does have direction. What do they both have? A scalar has only magnitude, and a vector has both magnitude and direction. So we're going to say this is an M, this is an M, and a D, magnitude and direction. Now, we talked about three terms as well that are all examples of either vectors or scalars. We talked about distance. We talked about position. And we talked about displacement. Three really closely related terms, but three terms that mean something slightly different from one another here. Uh, distance, position, displacement, all measured in meters because they all measure almost the same thing. All measure meters. Okay, symbol for distance would be delta D. Symbol for position would be D. Symbol for displacement would be delta D with the little arrow over it. What does that arrow mean, by the way? What does that little half arrow above the position of displacement mean? I'm sorry? Direction. So there is a direction associated with position displacement. They're vectors. Distance is, is a scalar, right? How do we define distance? That's the easy one, right? Distance is how far something's gone. Okay, if I walk 10 meters this way or I walk 10 meters this way, my distance traveled is 10 meters. It doesn't matter which way I went because distance is a scalar. It just matters that I went 10 meters. I traveled 10 meters. So how far I've gone. Position is where I am. And it's always got to be measured relative to something. There's got to be a reference point, right? Relative to something. I am 10 meters to the right of the wall. I am 10 meters in front of the car. I am 10 meters north of whatever. 10 meters to the west of whatever. Okay, your position has to have a direction associated with it. Okay, so we call that a vector. Displacement is defined as what? You can tell me this one. Let's look at the symbol. Okay, you forget what it means. Let's look at the symbol. Position is D. Displacement is delta D with a little arrow over it. So what's displacement mean? Okay, okay. So so your final point relative to your to your initial point, your starting point, or your change in position. Right? How, far, how much your position has changed by. And that's going to be a vector, because that matters, right? I run around the track once. My distance traveled is 400 meters. My displacement as I run around the track is zero, because my position was here initially, and my final position is also here. My final position is the same as my initial position. Right? I'll give you an example that I gave you in class the other day on Thursday. Okay? Let's say that I start two meters. This one's a little bit different. I start two meters north of the wall. Let's say I walk five steps, or five meters. Let's say one step is one meter. Okay, so I start two meters. Okay, I'm walking one, two, three, four, five. What's my distance traveled there? Five meters. What's my initial position there? No. My initial position wasn't zero this time. What was my initial position? Remember I said I started off two meters to the north of the wall? What was my initial position? Two meters north. What was my final position? I walked five meters. What was my final position? Seven meters north, right? What was my displacement? Five meters to the north, right? Final minus initial. Seven minus two is five. Let's try this one. Okay, let's say this time I start out at the wall. Okay, my position is zero. I walk five steps, one, two, three, four, five. Distance traveled, five. Displacement, five to the north, right? Let's say I walk another two steps, one, two. Distance traveled is, total distance traveled is seven. My displacement is seven. 
to the north, right? Because there's a direction associated with it. Okay, let's try one more, one more. This time, let's go seven meters to the north. Okay, start at zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now let's turn around and go three meters this way. One, two, three. What's my distance traveled there? 10 meters, right? What's my displacement? I went seven, then I went three the other way. What's my displacement? Four meters to the north. Because I started off at zero, and now I end up at four meters to the north. My change in position is four meters to the north. You can see how distance and displacement, they're often the same number until I change direction. As long as I went in a straight line and didn't back, turn back and change direction, my distance was the same value as displacement. Displacement just had a, a direction associated with it. Um, but as soon as I turned around and walked in the opposite direction, my displacement and distance became different numbers. Scalars and vectors, the scalar and their vector equivalent, will always have the same value until I change direction. Okay, when I do that, then the numbers are going to be different. Does that make sense? Okay, we had some homework, and that was on page 10, 1 to 7. Any issues with any of those questions, uh, 1 to 7 on page 10. We'll go over the ones that we need to go over. We won't go over the ones that you had no trouble with. So let me know now which ones you did have trouble with, and we'll spend some time on those. All right, then, if nobody has any questions at all, we'll define three more terms. These are the ones we've already done, right? We won't do those again. Now let's take a look at the ones on the bottom. Time, speed, and velocity. You know what? I don't even want to define time. I, for the life of me, have never been able to come up with a good definition for time. You start thinking about that for a second. Right? How do you define time? It's one of those things that everybody knows what it is, but nobody knows how to define it. Look in the dictionary for the definition of time. It's a terrible definition. Hey, nowhere have I ever seen a real good definition of time. Listen, we all know what it means, so we won't bother defining it here, okay? We won't even play that game. I'm sorry? I can't even remember. It's stupid, but I don't remember what it said. I know that I didn't write it down because it wasn't a very good definition. What's the symbol for time? Well, if we're talking about a time interval, which we usually are, then the symbol for time would be delta t. If we're talking about a very specific moment in time, then it would just be t. Usually in physics, it's, it's a time interval. Five minutes have gone by. 30 seconds have gone by. 12 years have gone by. That's delta t. If we happen to be talking about a specific moment in time, it's 2.34 right now. Or we're out at 3.26. Whatever specific time you're talking about, it would be t. But usually in physics, again, it's going to be delta t because you're talking about a time interval in physics. Units for time? What do you think the standard units are? There's lots of units we could use, right? Hours, days, years, millennia. What are the standard units for time? Seconds. Seconds. Okay, so we're going to almost always use seconds. We can use something else sometimes. But seconds always works for us. So let's write that down as our go-to unit, our standard unit. Time is a vector or a scalar. Is there a direction? Right now, it is 2.35 p.m. To the right. Tomorrow, when I come to school, it will be 8.05 to the north. Does that make any sense? Is there a direction associated with time? No. So time is a times a scalar. Speed, again, we all know what this means already, but we do have a pretty good definition for speed. So we'll write it down despite the fact that we all kind of really know what it means already. Speed is how fast something moves. How fast something moves. 
The symbol for speed, you might think it would be a, an S, but it's not. It's a lowercase v, a small v. The units for speed would typically be meters per second, although you sometimes can use kilometers per hour or kilometers per day or centimeters per second or whatever. But the standard units, the ones that we're going to use most of the time, are meters per second. The speedometer on your car measures speed. Is speed a vector or a scalar? I drove to Pincher Creek yesterday. My son had hockey in Pincher Creek. Set the cruise control at 115. I mean, uh, I mean 108. I set the cruise control at 108 kilometers per hour because the speed limit's 110. So I set it at 108. You got that? I set it at 108. Okay. Nowhere, nowhere on the dash of my car did it say 108 to the south or 108 to the west. It just said 108. My speedometer speed measured a scalar quantity, not the direction. So we're going to say that speed is a scalar. I wouldn't have said it for 115 because I would be speeding. I wouldn't do that, right? Velocity sounds an awful lot like speed, though. Velocity is also how fast something is moving, but in a particular direction. We're going to define it slightly different, though. We're going to say it's the rate of change of position. And the symbol for velocity is going to be a V as well, a lowercase v as well. But this time it's going to be a lowercase v with a little arrow over top of it. The units are going to be meters per second. And since we see that arrow on top of it, we know that it's going to be a vector or a scalar. Somebody said it. It's going to be a vector. If I run around the track 400 meters in a time of, let's say, say 40 seconds, okay, that's pretty good. That's really good, actually, if I could run around the track in, in 40 seconds. 400 meters in 40 seconds. Okay? My average speed would be 10 meters per second. What's my average velocity? The average speed is 10 meters per second, right? It's 400 divided by 10, which is... No, wow. Uh, sorry, 400 divided by 40, which is 10 meters per second, which is pretty good, pretty quick, uh, pretty quick speed. Like, really good. But what's my average velocity? The rate of change of position. What's my change in position, first of all, as I run around the track? Zero. What's my average velocity as I run around that track? Zero. If I drive to Edmonton and back, my average speed might be somewhere in the range of 100 kilometers per hour. My average velocity is zero because velocity accounts for direction. Speed doesn't. Is that okay? Now, there's an equation that goes along with speed and velocity. The speed version of it looks like this. Okay, speed is distance over time. The velocity equation, the velocity version looks like this. It's displacement over time. Again, they look virtually identical, except that one involves distance over time and one involves displacement over time. If you're running around the track, 400 meters for the distance. Okay, displacement would be zero in that case. How quickly something's moving, okay, not including direction, versus how quickly something's moving, including direction. In other words, the rate of change of position. I've got a couple examples for you here. Okay, the first two, unfortunately, don't appear in your textbook, so I'm going to ask you to copy these questions out, okay? Um, this goes back to when I moved to Alberta from uh, near Halifax 18 and a half years ago. I got a, an interview for this job in Halifax, never been west of Thunder Bay, Ontario in my life. Okay. Uh, took the job, got the job, took the job, piled up and piled everything I owned into my car and drove out to Calgary. And I remember the distance that I drove in five days by myself as a 23-year-old kid almost 
was 5,100 kilometers, 5,100 kilometers in five days. It's a long drive. Uh, if any of you guys have ever been out east, like in eastern Canada, you know things are a lot closer together than they are here. When you're driving down the highway, you see a sign that says, you know, Halifax. It might be 34 kilometers away. Or, you know, um, Sydney, or Moncton, or Fredericton, or Charlottetown, or everything is close together. At west, you know that you can drive for hours and hours and hours. Okay? You drive four hours to Edmonton, and it's nothing. Okay, in Nova Scotia, if you drive four hours, you're three provinces away. I remember when I drove out here, um, on the last day, I get to Regina. The fifth day, I get to Regina. On this side of Regina, and I see a big sign on the highway. One of those signs that says how far away something is. And it says Calgary. I see Calgary on it. And I'm thinking... Okay, I'm going to be close. I'm close to Calgary, right? On the other side of the sign, it said 750 kilometers. The most I ever saw on a sign like that in my life before that was maybe 90 kilometers. I, re I thought I was excited. I thought I was close. And then I realized, wait a second. I'm still eight hours away from Calgary. Okay. This question is based on that. Regina is 600 kilometers west of Winnipeg. Calgary is 1,350 kilometers west of Winnipeg. Takes a car eight hours to get from Regina to Calgary. What's the car's average speed and velocity? Let's define east as oh, sorry. Let's define west as positive. Therefore, these numbers all become positive numbers. Okay, what do we know about this 600 kilometers? Is that a position, or is that a displacement? Is that how far the car has gone, or is that where the car is? Or sorry, not the car. Is that Regina? Is that where Regina is? Or how far Regina has traveled? Position or, or displacement? It's position. Yeah, right. Regina is here. Regina hasn't gone anywhere. Okay, some people might like it to go somewhere, but it hasn't gone anywhere. Okay, Regina is and was 600 kilometers to the west of, uh, of Winnipeg. So we're going to say... Position initial versus, listen, if I had wrote it down like this, then that would be a displacement, right? Okay, it's not a displacement. Regina hasn't gone anywhere. Regina is in that particular place. It's a position. Now, my final position is Calgary. It's 1,350 kilometers west of Winnipeg. Calgary hasn't gone anywhere either. It is, it was, and it always will be 1,350 kilometers to the west of Winnipeg. Again, a final position. Not a displacement, but a position. The time interval is 8 hours. And we're looking for the average speed. And we're looking for the average velocity. Make sure you write down the givens like this, okay? That's important. Hey, look at the question. What's going on here? We've got a, a speed and velocity question. Write down your givens. Okay, identify an equation now that fits here. To find the speed, we're going to use the speed equation, the one we just learned, V equals delta D over delta T. It is, hmm, look at my distance traveled. What is it? No, oh, close though. 750, right? 750 kilometers. My time interval is 8.0 hours, and I think that works out to be 93, I think, kilometers per hour. Is that right? How many of you guys have done this? All of us have, right? You don't need to know anything about physics to be able to tell when you're driving on the highway, you see one of those signs, oh, Calgary is 750 kilometers away. That's going to take me about eight hours, right? We all do that in our heads. Okay, whether we know physics equations or not, we've all done that in our heads. Okay, we're all using the equation V equals D over T, whether we realize it or not. Okay, 93 kilometers per hour. What's my average velocity now? Displacement over time. Displacement is what? Oh, 
Well, it's 750 kilometers to the west. Let's stick a little positive in there to remind us that it's to the west. We defined west as positive already. So it's positive 750 divided by 8 hours. Gives me a positive 93 kilometers per hour. Or 93 kilometers per hour to the west. What's the difference here? Numerically, none. Same number. Why? Because we haven't changed direction. But speed doesn't have a direction. Velocity does. Now, I'm driving, I'm driving down the highway. Usually, all I care about is my speed. Okay? 93 kilometers per hour. But if I need a direction, then I have to measure velocity, not speed. Okay, let's try one more here. This one says a hiker walks 300 meters east, then 1,200 meters west. Let's define east as positive this time and west as negative. Takes a hiker 1,800 seconds. What's the hiker's average speed and velocity? Okay, we've got a couple of things given to us here. We have 300 meters to the east. We'll make that a positive value. And 1,200 meters to the west. We'll make that a negative value because we define east as positive. Is that a position or a displacement? Is the hiker 300 meters to the east of something, or is the hiker gone, th traveled 300 meters? Position, displacement. It's displacement. Good. And the last question, Regina, or sorry, um, yeah, Regina is 600 kilometers to the west of Winnipeg. That's where Regina is. That's a position. In this question, the hiker has traveled, has walked 300 meters east. That's not where the hiker is. That's how far the hiker's gone. The displacement of the hiker is 300 meters to the east. But then he goes 1,200 meters to the west. So there's another displacement. Let's call them D1 and D2. Not DI and DF. We kind of reserve the I and the F for positions, initial position, final position. Here we have two displacements, not positions. The time is 1,800 seconds. We want to find the average speed again, and we want to find the average velocity again. Almost the same question, right? Well, speed is distance over time. Remember what we did for the last question? To find distance, we said 1350 minus, no, what was it? Yeah, it was 1350 minus 600. 1350 minus 600. What do we do here? 1200 minus 300? What do we do here, Ted? Yes, we add them. When we have two positions, like we had in this question, we subtract them. When we have two displacements, like we have in this question, we add them. Does that make sense? How far has this hiker gone? We're not going to subtract these numbers to find out how far this hiker's gone. We're going to add them together. When we want to find out how far I drove from Regina to Calgary, then we have to subtract the two positions. So we add these together. 300 plus negative 1,200 is neg 900. Is that right? Well, if I gave you the right numbers, it is. We're trying to find average speed here. It's distance over time. What's the distance traveled here? 1,500 meters. Because remember, distance doesn't include direction. We don't care that it's to the west when we're talking about distance. We're at 1,200 meters. It doesn't matter what direction. The time is 1,800 seconds. What does that work out to be? Uh, 5, 6, 0 0.83, is that right? Zero point eight three three meters per second. That's a pretty slow hiker. Right. Oh well. Now let's find the average velocity. It's displacement over time. Displacement over time. What's my total displacement here? Add or subtract them. Listen, just remember this. When you're given 
positions subtract. When you're given displacements, add. So let's add these together, just like we did with distance. This time, though, we do have to pay attention to direction. So it's not 300 plus 1,200. It's 300 plus negative 1,200, which gives me negative 900 over the time interval of 1,800 seconds. Gives me negative 0 0.500 meters per second. Or we could say 0 0.500 meters per second to the west. Anybody tell me why these two numbers are different this time? And the last question, my speed and velocity, although one had a direction, one didn't, they both had the same value. Here, speed and velocity are different values. Why? talked about this a little bit earlier. They will always have the same value when we don't do what? When we don't switch directions. They're going to be different values when we do switch directions. And that's what we've done here, right? We've gone to the east, then we've gone to the west. Is that okay? It's quite a bit to absorb here, actually, guys. Uh, the whole, not that V equals D over T thing, but the whole idea of more distance and displacement. Okay, when we have a position, when we have a displacement, when we add, when we subtract. Where you are, position. How far you've gone, displacement. When you've got two positions, subtract them. When you've got two displacements, you add them. Okay, remember those four things. And we've got a fighting chance. Okay? Last one, I promise. Last one. This one you don't have to copy out, although I do want you to copy out the solution. Just write down at the top of your question, 1.7, page one, page 37 here. And since this says, find the average velocity of the student who jogs 750 meters to the east in five minutes, does stretches for 10 minutes, then runs another three kilometers east in 30 minutes. Okay, so she runs, and she stops, then she runs again. 750 meters, let's define east as positive first, so that everything is positive is east and everything negative is west. Something is positive 750 meters. Can you tell me what that is? Is that a position or displacement? Is that where she is or how far she's gone? How far she's gone. That's a displacement. We're going to call that D1. Now, T1 is five minutes. Uh, T2 is 10 minutes. How far has she gone during the second stage here? What's my displacement during the second stage? We'll call it delta D2. Zero. And delta D3, again, another displacement, not position. She's not three kilometers to the east of something. She's traveled three kilometers to the east. Okay, displacement in a time of 30 minutes. We'll call it T3 is 30 minutes. We want to find the average velocity. So let's say V is equal to delta D over delta T. We've got displacements here, okay? D1, D2, D3. Do we add them or do we subtract them? With positions, we subtract. With displacements, we add. So let's add these three things together. 750 meters plus 0 meters plus 3 kilometers, okay, which is same as 3,000 meters, gives me 3,750 meters. My time here, I don't really like minutes. We could use minutes, but I'd rather use seconds. Five minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes, that's 45 minutes. 45 minutes is how many seconds? Twenty seven hundred seconds. Five minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes. Multiply that by 60, and we get 2,700 seconds. Let's figure out what that is now. 
we get 1.38, 1.39 meters per second. Since it's positive, we know it's to the east. Okay. Let me tell you what a lot of people want to do on a question like this. They see, okay, the, we got 750, five minutes. Okay, these go together. Let's find the velocity here. Let's find the velocity here. Let's find the velocity here. Add them up and divide by three, right? Does that work? No. Why not? Because it's different times. If I drive to Edmonton, Let's say I drive at 100 kilometers per hour on the highway, the whole way, except I stop at Gasoline Alley in Red Deer for a break to get a Coke. I stop for five minutes. I'm going at zero kilometers per hour. So I'm going at 100, then I'm going at zero, then I'm going at 100. Add them up and divide by three, 67 kilometers per hour. Was that my average speed, Edmonton? No, my average speed was almost 100 kilometers per hour, right? You can't add them up and divide by three unless they were at the same time intervals. So don't ever try to do that. Okay, you get the total displacement like we did here, the total time divide. Okay, let's uh, let's see what you can do with two questions here, please. On page 37, I'm going to cover up the answers here, but we'll show them to you in just a few moments once you've had a chance to do these questions. Okay, sit at your desk, work on these. Call me over if you have trouble with any of these, either of these questions. Ask me questions. And then we'll take a look at them when you're finished. Let's take a look, everyone, at question number two. This one says, person A runs the 100-meter dash in 9.84 seconds, then tags person B, who runs 200 meters in 19.32 seconds. Person B then tags another shape, person C, who runs 400 meters in 1.9 minutes. Find the average velocity for the trio, and uh, we want to compare it to each individual's average velocity and assume they're all running in a straight line. So we're not changing direction here at all. Um, things get messed up if we change direction, right? The speed becomes different than the velocity and so on. Uh, let's deal with person A, B, and C separately, OK? Uh, there's too much going on here. Too much going on. Let's just deal with it separately here. Let's say uh, something for person A is 100 meters. What would that be? Is that, is that how far this person has gone? Or is that where this person is? How far this person's gone? So is that going to be a position? Or is that going to be a displacement? Displacement. Now, somebody asked a good question earlier on. Well, we don't have direction here. So how do, we, how do we say it's displacement? Shouldn't it be just distance if we don't know what the direction is? We're going to assume the direction is the positive direction. However we define positive, north or east or west, doesn't matter. It's the positive direction. So there is a direction. We just don't know what it is. Does that make sense? It's the positive direction here, 100 meters. OK, the time for person A, or you could call it person 1, is 9.84 seconds. Person B runs 200 meters. We're going to call that displacement B, 200 meters, in a time of 19.32 seconds. You notice 9.84 seconds was the world record for the 100-meter sprint for the longest time. Now it's 9.59. It's not even close to that anymore. But 19.32 um, but seconds is a very realistic time for the 200-meter. Why can people run the 200-meter faster than twice the time for the 100-meter? Could you explain that one? Why, why would the time for the 200? You would think almost that the time for the 200-meter would be slower than twice the time for the 100 meter, right? Because the person would be getting tired and slowing down, right? Why is it faster? Yeah, by the time you get to the second 100 meter sprint, you're already moving at peak speed. Do you know what peak speed is, by the way, for a world cross sprinter? Say for Usain Bolt, who runs 9.59 100 meter sprint. You know what his peak speed is? It's somewhere in the range of 14, 15 meters per second. That's from that wall to that wall, and then another half a room in one second. That is somewhere in the range of 50 to 60 kilometers per hour. 
that is about twice the speed limit in a school zone. We've seen Bolt's late for school one day. He's running to school and he gets a speeding ticket for running to school. That's how fast. That's how fast these guys are when they're running these kind of times. That's as opposed to person C, who's a little bit slower. Right, 400 meters for the displacement of person C runs further, but not nearly as fast. A time of 1.9 minutes. Now, what we want to recognize here is that we got to convert this in seconds, right? We can't be in minutes and seconds and mix and match. What is 1.9 minutes and seconds? Multiply it by 60, we get 114 seconds. Okay, let's find, we got to find the velocity of each of them. And then we got to find the total velocity. So let's get each of them first. The velocity of person A is delta D over delta T. That's 100 meters divided by 9.84 seconds. What does that give me? 100 divided by 9.84. Yep. 10.2. So this person's average is 10.2. The peak speed would be quite a bit higher, right? The average is 10.2, including the time that it took this person to accelerate. Okay, let's do the second one here now. The average speed here is going to be delta D over delta T again. Uh, delta D is 200 meters divided by 19.32 seconds. What do we get there? 10.2. Ten point four meters per second. Okay, and finally, let's do the last person here. The velocity of person C is delta D over delta D T again. Uh, four hundred meters divided by one hundred fourteen seconds. What does that give me? Three point five. Well, that's a lot slower, right? This person's pretty much walking. Um, and they're jogging, right? It's a slow jog. Okay, 3.5 meters per second. There's the speeds of all the individuals. Now, if we want to find the average speed of all of them combined, okay, the average velocity for the trio, what are we going to do? 10.2 plus 10.4 plus 3.5 divided by 3? Is that right? No, it doesn't work. Remember what we said, drive to Edmonton, stop in Red Deer? You can't just add up 100 plus 0 and divide by 2. It doesn't work. What we've got to do is say total displacement over total time. The total displacement here is 100 meters plus 200 plus 400 is 700 meters. The total time is 9.84 plus 19.32 plus 114. Who has that, that total time there? 143.16 seconds. Thank you. Now let's divide 700 divided by 143. I assume we get... Uh, 4.89 probably, eh? The answer in the book there, 4.89 meters per second. So quite a bit slower than the first two, but faster than the last one, right? Make sense? Don't add them up divided by 3. Get the total displacement over the total time. By the way, what's the direction of each of these? Forward or positive, right? In the positive direction, whatever that is. Does that make sense? Okay, I got good news and bad news for you. What do you want first? That could be the bad news or the good news, yeah. Let's have no homework for today, hey? How about that? No homework? Sound good? All right, no homework for today, I guess. Pack it up.